we're going to talk about world order. So usually when we are at subject of world order, usually people just talk about China and U.S., but I'm wondering where is Thailand? Uh, I think that Thailand uh, will be in an important position uh, in this uh, coming new world order. Uh, but first, we have to understand that uh, I think the world order is now uh, what a lot of people call multiplex world order. Even though the current one, what's going on right now, it's moving toward moving that direction. Moving toward that direction. Right. Uh, meaning that moving toward a more uh, complex and disoriented uh, world order. Disoriented. Disoriented, well. okay. yes. Uh, because I think it's the end of American dominance. Right. You know, I think in the past uh, uh, 30 to 40 years, especially uh, after the end of the Cold War, uh, we see very clearly uh, the leadership uh, of the US. Uh, but right now, uh, after four years of President Donald Trump, right, right. And, and you know the rise of China, right, we see that uh, uh, not only the U.S. Uh, has less influence uh, in a lot of uh, world sphere, uh, but also we see that China has increased uh, influence and increased uh, initiatives uh, in the world. Uh, so we, we see the new balance uh, between the two superpowers, uh, the U.S. and China, and. Uh, to answer your questions where Thailand stands, uh, I think Thailand stands that uh, in this uh, middle road, right? Middle and, road. <laughs> and we okay. need to find a balance uh, between right. these two superpowers. Talking about Thailand, you said earlier today that uh, Thailand has potential in geopolitical games. Mm -hmm. But when you say someone has potential, it means it's not happening yet, right? <laughs> so how, how can we change that potential to be capability? Yeah, but I, I think that when we say potential, we mean that uh, it will happen, it will have potential if we do something. Right. right. right? So, how? so we, have, we have to do more, right? Uh, and, and, and how? I think that uh, first, I think we need to understand clearly what our positions are in different uh, dimensions and different issues. And I think there's no one size fits all answers, right? I think we have to think uh, separately. Uh, in different issues, uh, what what are uh, our position in the health issues, the vaccine issues, uh, the economic issues, the trade issues, right? Uh, and, and so uh, I think that you know it's uh, the end of the era of one clear cut answer. Right. Oh, we are just friendly to everyone, uh, right. but I think we have to have a clear analytics uh, in different issues. So that's first. Uh, second, uh, I think that we also need to understand our new bargaining power. Uh, because I think that with the change in, and we do in, have we do have a bargaining power because with the change in geopolitics, uh, we are not just a small nation. I often uh, say that uh, right now Thailand and also ASEAN uh, as a whole as a group uh, is now a middle power uh, in, to a certain extent right. uh, because uh, you know both the U.S. and China have to rely on us uh, strategically, right? Uh, so if we understand this new bargaining power, uh, it will help us uh, in thinking about our negotiating position, both in, in, in when we negotiate with China, but also when we negotiate with the U.S. Uh, the third point, and I think this is uh, very important, uh, is that uh, we will have potential if we know how to mitigate, mitigation. Uh, so not just uh, you know, relying on China right. or relying on the U.S., uh, but right now with the multiplex world, uh, it's not only the U.S. or China, but we see the rise of India, uh, the, the, the rise of Russia, uh, you know, uh, the former Soviet Union. Trying to come back. Trying to, in, trying to come back, right? right? And, and also Japan is still an important partner. But also we can find opportunities uh, in uh, other regions as well. Uh, for example, Latin American region, uh, Africa, uh, uh, Central Asia, right? I was going to ask if Central Asia is still in the play. Yes, and especially uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative right. uh, of China, uh, the the central point of that initiative uh, is both ASEAN uh, and right. also Central Asia. And Central Asia has a huge uh, potential for economic development uh, because uh, it's still uh, right now it's still at a low level of economic development, but I think it has huge uh, potential both in terms of its uh, natural resources and uh, young population. And with the Belt and Road Initiative, how is it going to proceed after COVID-19 and how is it going to benefit Thailand as a whole? Uh, that's a very good question because uh, with the COVID-19, uh, 
uh, we see that China is right now uh, refocus its energy uh, uh, back to its domestic right. uh, issues. Uh, when we see Xi Jinping's uh, speech uh, last week, uh, major speech in uh, Shenzhen, or uh, Premier Li Keqiang's uh, speech uh, to the uh, National Assembly, uh, they all talk about mainly domestic issues. And uh, very, uh, very few lines mention uh, Belt and Road Initiative, or, or just you know, mention in names. Uh, so I think that the pace of the initiative uh, will be slower than uh, in, in the past. Uh, because China right now, I think it's focused its financial resources uh, and attention uh, to its domestic problems uh, after uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, but in the long run, I think that it will still be a signature uh, international policy initiative right. of China. Uh, because for China, uh, it's also helps solve its own uh, problems, you know, by uh, by trying to engage uh, with the world, trying to find new markets uh, after the trade war with the U.S. Uh, so all of this also important uh, to, to China's domestic problem. Uh, in terms of Thailand, uh, I think that uh, Thailand is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative. That's uh, no question. Uh, and we see a lot of signature projects, for example, uh, the Thai and Chinese uh, high-speed rail, right? Uh, so I think that for us, uh, we need to keep uh, Keep building on uh, this basis uh, of cooperation, uh, and and also try to engage with China, uh, uh, and and seek opportunities. Uh, and right now, uh, with the COVID, for example, on the vaccine front, uh, uh, last week uh, the the foreign minister of China visited Thailand and reassured Thailand. You know, so so there's still a lot of rooms of engagement uh, uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative. Talking about signature, um, the trade war is also Trump's signature. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, beside Bell and Road, um, the Ch South China Sea, what's going on? It also Chinese uh, signature as well. Would there be a point that Thailand cannot, not choosing standpoint, not having standpoint anymore? Will there be a point that the situation forces us to pick something? Well, we see a lot of signature policies uh, in this, uh, in this uh, a couple of years. Uh, we see Trump's trade war. Uh, we see uh, China's uh, uh, conflict in the South China Sea. And then uh, Thailand's position amidst uh, these issues, right? Uh, I think on the South China Sea problem, I think Thailand has a very clear and consistent uh, policy, right? Uh, we are... Uh, uh, first, uh, we emphasize uh, both parties or m many parties, right? Because there's a lot of uh, right. uh, multi-parties that have uh, conflicting claims there uh, to engage uh, peacefully uh, in terms of this pill uh, resolution. Uh, and, and I think Thailand uh, is in a very strong position because we don't have any conflicts uh, in that area, right? So we can help uh, mediate uh, between uh, different parties also. I don't think we have been doing anything like we that. We have been, we are not proactive enough. That, yes. That's, that might, uh-huh. Uh, but I think that, you know, uh, especially uh, our position uh, in terms of uh, in the previous ASEAN meetings, right. uh, I think we also have a very consistent uh, policy that we are not, you know, favoring anyone. There, uh -huh. right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, that, that's a good start. That's a good start. Okay, <laughs> but uh, you, so in the, Come back to the question. So you don't think there will be a point that Thailand really have to pick a side, right? Uh, first of all, uh, I think that uh, one of the characteristics uh, of this uh, Cold War competition uh, between these two superpowers uh, is that uh, they try to link uh, different uh, dimensions uh, with each other. For example, uh, they might turn up the heat uh, <laughs> in the South China Sea in order to benefit uh, from trade negotiations. Right. Uh, they turn up the heat on human rights issue uh, in China, in, in Xinjiang, in Hong Kong. Everything can be a tool. Uh, 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 yes, a, a tool uh, for negotiations in different right. uh, dimensions. Uh, but we do hope uh, that when they turn up the heat, they don't turn it uh, too much, too high. Right? <laughs> too high, up until it will burst, or right. it will, it will uh, fr turn from the cold war into a hot war. 
Uh, and I think that both sides, uh, I still hope that they will find uh, enough wisdom <laughs> to balance. Uh. Okay. Right. <laughs> so what would be the biggest challenge for Thailand in terms of positioning itself within the geopolitics and what would be the best way to overcome this? Well, I, I think the major challenge uh, is that it will be a lot uh, trickier uh, you know, than, than in, the, in the past. Uh, because in the past, you know, with a very, uh, very clear American dominance, right? Uh, and you know we all have this world order with all these international organizations playing a role. Uh, we say it's a multilateral uh, world, right? So we know uh, who we, we have know to who kiss. we have to. Well, we know who, <laughs> who, who we have to kiss, who we have to coordinate. Uh, what we know the game. Right. Right. Right now, I think perhaps uh, the game is quite different, right? And I think that uh, it's it's a turning from from a science into an art, mm. right? And, and in that, I think we need to be uh, very flexible. Uh, also, uh, we need to keep uh, the balance, the balancing act, right? Uh, well, uh, we don't need to rely much on either side. Uh, we need to mitigate our interests. Uh, and, and these are all major challenges uh, uh, in the uh, foreign policy perspectives. Definitely. Talking about challenges, um, China will have Xi Jinping as their leader, I don't know. Maybe not forever, but for a really long time. But the political situation in US right now, we know from four years ago, the poll doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> so we don't know yet who's going to be next president. What Thailand should do? Should we prepare anything for the change, for uh, the landscape that will happen after the presidency? What if Joe Biden or if uh, Trump still on the position? Well, I think we will know very soon, right? Uh, in less than a month. Uh, and I think that uh, for us, uh, either uh, Joe Biden or Trump, uh, there will be some uh, uh, things that are not some, consistent. some consistency, right. right? I think that uh, the rise of China, uh, I think that the trade uh, conflict between the two superpowers, uh, the turbulent world that we see at the multiplex world, uh, I think this will still continue.